Happiness is fleeting. And suffering requires a sustaining meaning. Happiness is fleeting. And suffering requires a sustaining meaning. That place where the meaning and the fact are conjoined. That's the proper place to lecture from. What you want to do as an academic is tell your students about something that you've encountered that you've fallen in love with and to communicate the love that you have for that and not to say well you should read this book but to say well here's this book and here's what it can open up for you and this is how it does it this is what you'll gain from it there's something in it that's of unbelievable utility and you have to believe that in order to communicate it to communicate that commitment you have to beauty and to truth and to literature it isn't enough to say what they are and to transmit them it's to manifest yourself as a living part of that tradition and to show yourself thereby as a model for living out what that tradition represents and to show that that's so much better than like a short-term pleasure-seeking nihilism. They're not even in the same conceptual universe. And people are far more open to that. They know already. People know, especially when they're hurt. They know that happiness is fleeting. And suffering requires a sustaining meaning. They know happiness is fleeting. Suffering requires a sustaining meaning. King's Chapel, the people who started it didn't live to see its completion. They were driven by this nobility of transcendent vision and they produced these enduring forms. And out of the bloody misery of history, we've erected all this spectacular infrastructure that we're so fortunate to be part of. And none of that gratitude is taught. It's partly not taught because people have no sense of the absolute catastrophe of history. It's like nasty, brutish, and short. The simplest and most likely social circumstances. Catastrophe punctuated by hell. And to see that not happening in a sustained manner constantly and to see things improving around us and to be reliable in that manner and then not to be grateful for that. It's an unbelievable combination of ignorance, ingratitude and willful blindness. And to not instill that sense in young people for them to understand that they are standing on the bones of generations of people who suffered to make this possible despite all their errors and have brought this forward. Happiness is fleeting. And suffering requires a sustaining meaning. They know happiness is fleeting. And that suffering requires a sustaining meaning. We could concentrate on building the future instead of criticizing the past. You start in the world if you have some wisdom and some humility by taking the potential that lies dormant in front of you and interacting with it in the Logos-like manner with truth and with love and by transforming that potential into whatever you can create out of it that's good. It won't be small if you do that. You can transform your whole household by transforming your room. You can transform your whole neighborhood by transforming your house. Like these things spread very, very rapidly. And that is right there in front of you. People think they're impoverished, that they don't have any opportunity. And the opportunity is hidden from them by their unwillingness to take the steps that are necessary to put what they could put in front of them in order and to produce the beauty instead of the ugliness where they could do that. And I don't think there is anything more powerful than that. That works. Happiness is fleeting. Suffering requires a sustaining meaning. They know happiness is fleeting. And that suffering requires a sustaining meaning. Happiness is fleeting. And suffering requires a sustaining meaning. They know happiness is fleeting. And that suffering requires a sustaining meaning.
one who's lived knows that. And so to say, well, here's some balm for the suffering, and it's profound and deep, and here's what it's meant to me, and here's how you can incorporate it into your life. People are absolutely starving for that, or dying of thirst for that.